Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing G is the Gumshoe, written by Sue Grafton. It's another book in the Alphabet Murder series. I enjoyed this book a lot. It is a return of some of our side characters that are missing mostly from the last two books in the series, but in this book, we see a lot of Henry and quite a bit more of Rosie. And I did enjoy that a lot, because I really adore Henry and Rosie. While this book did have a lot going on in it for Kinsey, I didn't enjoy it as much as some of the other books in the series. So for me, it's one of the weaker books in the series. It's still a good read, but just not as strong as the other books that I've read so far in this series. At the start of this book, we learn three things. Kinsey is soon to turn 33. Her new apartment is all built. So in a previous book, her apartment is blown up in a bomb blast and Henry Pitts, her landlord, drafted, created a new apartment for her and it's finally done. And the keys are handed over on her birthday. So it's a great present for Kinsey. The second thing is she gets a new case. There's a lady called Irene and she wants Kinsey to track down her mother. Her mother lives in a very remote area in the desert, in a van, like a, a trailer. And she wants Kinsey to just track her down to make sure she's okay, because Irene hasn't heard from her mother for a few months. And her mother usually calls once a month to let her know she's okay and to thank her for some money. So Irene's quite worried, and it seems quite easy for Kinsey to drive down, find where the mother is, and report back. So Kinsey's happy to take that case on. The third thing is, Kinsey finds out there's a hitman after her, there's a price on her head, and it relates back to a case she had a few years ago. Someone was put away because of her testimony, and that guy, of course, is not happy, and he's looking for revenge. He wants revenge against Kinsey, the judge, the attorney, the police. He wants, he's got a whole list of people on this list, and he's just shopping around trying to find multiple hitmen to take revenge on these people. Kinsey's one of them. She's not too worried at the start about it, because it seems a bit far away for her, the threat. But as the book goes on, the threat gets closer to home and she starts to worry, gets very concerned. Kinsey tracks down Irene's mother's trailer. So Irene's mother is called Agnes, Agnes Gray. Kinsey finds the trailer, but Agnes is missing. What she learns is that Agnes went to town and Kinsey tracks down some of the areas in town that Agnes went to and then finds out that Agnes went to hospital. She had a fall or some sort of episode while in town and she was rushed to hospital. When Kinsey tracks down the hospital, she finds out that Agnes was moved to a care facility. So she's tracked down Agnes to the care facility and finds Agnes in a quite a distressed state. Um, they think she's got dementia or Alzheimer's or something's going on and she seems very distressed, very upset. Kinsey calls Irene, gives the update on her mother and Irene has to organise to get her mother Agnes back to Santa Teresa in a care home again because Agnes can't look after herself. While Kinsey's doing all this in the desert, this is when she has her first real run-in with the hitman. A car drives past her in one of these scenes and shoots at her, shoots a tyre out. She gets that fixed, but then something else happens in the desert as well to her with this hitman, and so Kinsey's very scared for her life at this stage, and so she's got the idea to call on another PI that she had a, a brief um, connection with in a different book. She calls this guy and she arranges for him to come and help her. And he agrees to be a bodyguard, basically, to help her with security. This guy's name is called Robert Dietz. And he takes his job very seriously. So much so that it starts to cramp Kinsey's style. She's used to being a bit of a free spirit when she's investigating something on a case. She goes where she wants to you know, talks to who she wants to, but Dietz won't let her. Dietz is more worried about her safety, and every time she goes somewhere, he's by her side. And Kinsey doesn't like that, because she wants to go some places by herself, but Dietz is stuck to her like glue. So you'd think that after Kinsey tracked down Agnes, that she'd lose interest in that case. I mean, the case is done. She's done what she's paid for. But it doesn't end there, because while she was with Agnes, and Agnes was in, you know, this worried state, you know, not lucid, um, not in reality all the time. Agnes kept mentioning someone called Emily and some death that happened. There was a chimney that collapsed. Someone got hit 
with a brick and died. All these mysterious things that Agnes was going on about. And that piques Kinsey's interest a bit. She starts to wonder what Agnes was going on about. Did somebody really die? Is there, you know, a, a body buried in the past, so to speak? So Kinsey starts to investigate this. And is it linked to some of the things that Irene also is afraid of? Because Irene tends to have these phobias as well and, and is scared of many things. And they're extreme phobias. She has asthma attacks and fainting spells, panic attacks from very, very common and ordinary things also Kinsey thinks. So Kinsey is interested in both their pasts, in Irene and Agnes. She's not getting paid to delve into this, but she wants to because she's interested. So with all that going on, with the hitman after her, where they're trying to delve in to the past of Irene and Agnes, it's a very busy plot, very busy storyline, and Kinsey's pushed to her limits in some of this book. Can she stay safe and will she find out the truth? And what is the truth and how will it affect Irene and Agnes? That is big questions in this book, and I won't delve into too much more. There are quite a few twists in this book. Some of the twists are very good. The mystery is very good. I did enjoy the mystery behind Agnes and Irene. I found that quite fascinating because it was so different from any other book so far in this series. That mystery just had something unique about it. It just seemed very different, almost quaint in a way, as we went back and delved into that past. Because it's set in the 80s, it made that more fascinating because Kinsey and Dietz, because Dietz is always by her side in this book, Kinsey has to go and do so much manual work of going to libraries and scanning through old you know, newspaper articles to try to find the truth out. Trying to find the truth out about a birth certificate, for instance, and how manual that is. Nothing online. And she has to use you know, her wiles, you know, her cunning, to kind of convince people to give her evidence at times as well. I found that really exciting and entertaining in this book. And that was the best thing about this book, in my opinion, that mystery for Agnes and Irene, their past. The Hitman element, I didn't find very exciting at all, really. It was there for a little bit, but not enough. You know, it didn't get the tension in the book. It didn't make it that suspenseful because it was there in short snippets and almost forgotten about, really. The Hitman tries at the very start or you know towards the start of the book and it's almost forgotten that he's not a threat until towards the end and i found that a bit disappointing i thought more could have been done to ramp up that suspense and tension with the hitman side of things in this book irene who hires kinsey to find her mother irene's a bit of a strange character she has many different sides to her and she's very well constructed very well crafted she felt very real. Even though she has these extreme phobias about ordinary things, she still feels very real. She doesn't feel overdone. I like all those elements, the way they combine to make this character. I like the way that she can be a bit nonchalant about certain things, but then also very caring about her mother. She had very different sides to her, and she almost had a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Very complex as a character. Very good very well crafted. Another example of Sue Crafton creating a great character for just one book. And she manages to do this quite often. But I thought Irene was very special in her own way. Rob Dietz is quite interesting. He's a PI, or he was. He doesn't want to be anymore. He wants to go into more security. But he seems very laid back. For somebody who takes his job quite seriously, his task quite seriously of protecting Kinsey, he has a very laid back attitude to things. And he almost seems too laid back at times, but he seems a good balance for Kinsey. And it was interesting to have this guy in Kinsey's life who was available for her. And they do develop quite an interesting relationship in this book. And I thought it was good for Kinsey to have that break from Jonah, because Jonah is in and out of her life through the series so far. But I don't think Jonah is a very positive character for Kinsey. He's there as an ongoing love interest, but I thought Rob Dietz was a better love interest for Kinsey. In this book, we get a lot of Vera. Now, Vera is one of Kinsey's better friends, and sometimes Kinsey thinks of her as her best friend. She works for the insurance company. Vera is very vibrant, very brash, very forward. She dresses you know, in flash clothes. She always has her hair done, always has her makeup done. She's also a bit of a man-eater. She's always going through men, dating different men, left, right, and center. She doesn't want to get tied down to anybody. 
She's a chain smoker. She drinks Coca-Cola nonstop. In this book, she starts to stop smoking. And we see that in different parts in the book, her struggle with that. And that created a few comic elements. So she's a bit of comic relief as well in this book. But she's a very good character. And this book needed that, I think, needed that comic relief, needed that very vibrant and brash character just to bring a bit of lightness into this book. But I liked Vera. I enjoyed her a lot. And I think she'll be a very positive character for this series. And I can't remember if she pops up in future books. I've got a feeling she does. And I just hope that's true because I do enjoy Vera a lot. While I really did enjoy the mystery element with the history of Agnes and Irene in this book, it's not as strong as other books. I thought there was a bit too much going on at some parts. I thought Sue Grafton kind of missed the boat a little bit with the hitman angle. Could have made that a bit more suspenseful, brought the hitman into it a bit more. I rate this a 3.5 out of 5. It's not the strongest in the series for me. It's still a good book, but I thought it could have been stronger. As I read through this series, I'll review each book and put a video up online. If you don't want to miss out on those videos, check out my channel and subscribe. I also have a Sue Crafton playlist on my channel. You'll see it on your screen now.